Welcome to the five dumbest things on Wall Street, where this week we finally get the Dell shareholder vote. After all these months of fighting in the press, we'll finally know if the winner will be Michael, Carl, or our candidate, Carlos Danger. Okay, number five, Zynga zapped. Don't be an ass, Don Matrick. If you want to save your one-trick pony of a company, then let it ride. Shares of Zynga sank 14% Friday to three bucks after the online game developer's new CEO said he was abandoning plans for real money gaming in the United States in order to concentrate on free-to-play games instead. Frankly, we're not sure why Matrick wouldn't try to do both at once. There was no reason for him to fold this early, especially when Wall Street's analysts are beyond bullish on the future of internet gaming. Matrick, in our view, totally misread his hand. Instead of playing Zynga's lone wild card to the fullest, like a moron, he mucked it. Okay, number four, fertilizer foolishness. No two ways about it. Investors that blindly followed Dan Loeb into fertilizer stocks really stepped in it. CF industry stock surged 12% late Monday after the activist investor's third point hedge fund revealed its stake in the company. Loeb's play spurred traders to snap up CF competitors like Potash, Agrium, and Mosaic. Unfortunately for those lemmings, all those other stocks got slaughtered the next morning on news that the Russian fertilizer cartel was cracking. Even CF slipped a little Tuesday, falling 1.5% on the industry upheaval. The only thing that saved CF investors from an even worse fate was Loeb's shot across the bow to CF's executives. Too bad that shot landed squarely in the ass of the market's Me Too crowd. All right, number three, Cohen's remorse. Steve Cohen sure must feel like a real schmuck right now. Not because the billionaire's beloved hedge fund SAC Capital got busted for alleged insider trading, mind you. Judging from his recent $155 million Picasso purchase and the blowout party at his Hamptons estate last Saturday night, Cohen seemingly couldn't give a tweet about Preet Bharara's charges. No, what really must be getting Cohen's goat is the fact that flowingly maimed Jamie Dimon is getting a $410 million slap on the wrist for not supervising J.P. Morgan Chase's energy traders gone wild. Meanwhile, the feds are still going after the follically challenged Stevie, even though he paid the SEC $615 million for the supposed sins of his employees. To paraphrase Mars Blackman, money, it's gotta be the hair. Okay, number two, Perigo's ploy. Honestly, dumbest fans, Perigo's $8.6 billion deal to buy Irish biotech Elan purely to avoid paying U.S. taxes makes us sick to our stomachs. In fact, we'd reach for the Pepsid if it didn't add to the generic drug company's bottom line. Yeah, we know it makes good business sense to seek a tax haven, but the whole thing still stinks to high heaven. So much that, you know what, can you just hold that thought? Excuse me while I go for a Perigo purge. And the dumbest thing on Wall Street this week, Ackman's aha moment. Quick, somebody get Bill Ackman's shrink on the line. We think the billionaire hedge fund manager finally made a breakthrough. Ackman revealed Tuesday he acquired a 9.8% stake in air products and chemicals. Shares of the industrial gas seller spiked 3% on the news. Those same shares jumped over 6% last week when the company realized Ackman was on the attack and adopted a so-called poison pill takeover defense, blocking him from buying even more shares. Quote, I was a little too cute in my letter to investors. I didn't expect people to be running around looking for the company. I think it alerted the market, said Ackman. Perhaps this air products breakthrough will enlighten Ackman about the value in curtailing his own hot air. That silence can quite literally be golden. And most importantly, that shutting his trap will keep Carl Icahn off his ass. There you have it, the five dumbest things on Wall Street this week. We'll see you next week. But for now, thanks for watching.